With this image, we're going to look at an alternate way to go in and create a selection. This way, uh, we're going to use a layer mask, and the layer mask has a little bit of an advantage over other ways of, of kind of removing the background from parts of layers, in that uh, you can use all the selection tools, you can use the eraser tool, you can use the paintbrush tool, and you can kind of vary transparency if you want a kind of a transparent edge to blend in with, with a, another background. We are going to put that on this canvas. Uh, so the sheep are going to be in the lawn in front of the Eiffel Tower. So I, I think it's going to be easier to remove a lot of that background here with the sheep before we bring them over. So I am going to start by adding a layer mask to this layer. I don't want it to be a background layer anymore uh, because you can't have a layer mask on a background layer. So click on the lock. I'm going to call it sheep. Again, it's always a good idea to name your layers. And then this icon here, the black circle and the white rectangle is what you use to add a layer mask. You could always go under layer, uh, layer mask, uh, reveal all, and add it that way too. So either way is fine. Both work equally as well. So here we can see the layer mask is uh, connected to the layer thumbnail. This little link here means they're connected. So if I move one, I move the other. But what you want to make sure you do when you're working on this particular layer is that this isn't highlighted. This doesn't have, this thumbnail doesn't have the little white box around it but the layer mask has this little white box around it. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do this. You could go in and just go to the uh, eraser tool. Uh, let's just go to the basic eraser tool and just start removing the background like that. So that's one way to do it. Um, so the eraser tool, as long as black is the background color, erases to transparent. This isn't permanent, which is the, the big advantage. And when you have so much of the image that you want to get rid of, it's, it's kind of easy to get rid of most of it. I could always go in and use the rectangular um, marquee tool to just get rid of great big swaths of it. I think I took maybe a little bit too much. Oh, and I want to be on new selection. So there are great big areas that I know I don't need. I'll just resize this and move it over. So I can just go like this and select them and then get rid of them until I just have a tiny little area around the sheet. I deleted maybe a little bit too much of the shadow and that is one of the advantages of going in and using this layer mask, I can always just switch to the paintbrush tool and draw it back in again. So here I have, uh, you know, parts of the sheep are now vi visible. I'm going to go in, switch back to the eraser tool. So I could, I could do this. I could kind of gradually get closer and closer. I can also use the magic wand tool or the quick selection tool. And uh, now that's a little bit too much to just kind of select more of, of that. And again, it's very easy to get too much. You can see up at the ear here. I can also switch to the um, subtract from selection. And then uh, I have, you know, that ear is back. So you can kind of move back and forth between different, not just different selection tools, but different selection options. So quick mask, uh, sorry, uh, quick select, has selected too much, so then I can go in and get rid of a little bit more of it. And I can also go in and make my brush maybe a little bit smaller. Switch again to the subtract from selection option. And again, I can get rid of, oh, that just looks like I'm cutting off his feet, but his feet are hidden by the grass anyway, so that doesn't really matter. So I can switch back and forth between different selection tools and just kind of work away at getting rid of that background. 
Now here it might also be helpful to, I didn't move the sheep over to the Eiffel Tower file first, and it actually doesn't matter, you can do this any way you want, but it might have been handy to have done that first so that I could actually uh, use that, the original Eiffel Tower image as kind of a reference as I'm drawing. There might be areas where the greens kind of blend together, and I hope there are, and that would be helpful to have as well. So here I'm just, you know, I'm just adding to that selection. I'm going to leave that darker area where the shadow is kind of in place. And here, because the sheep are going onto another kind of grassy line, I don't necessarily have to get all of that kind of green part around the, um, around the sheep deleted. Here, maybe just a little bit more. And that doesn't look too, too bad. It's not perfect. But I think now would be a good time to move it over. Now, I'm not going to copy and paste this time because I would like to uh, keep, I don't want to apply the layer mask. I'm going to change the view so I can see both of them at the same time. And what I'm going to do is just go into the sheep. I'm going to grab that layer and I'm just going to drag the whole thing onto the Eiffel Tower. And switch to the move tool so now I don't I can switch back to this view mode and use this to just kind of position the sheet. So scale is something that you would have to work on and for that you need to reference the figures that are in the original Eiffel Tower image. So the sheep have to be pretty far in the foreground to remain at the size they are or uh, if you're moving them back a little bit more then you need to transform them and shrink them down. So Command T, shrink them down with reference to what's in the background. That looks like it's probably a little bit more realistic. Zoom in. And the other thing, uh, now maybe I should do this before scaling them down but the, we can see here clearly that the green from the original image is it's a little bit warmer than the background image uh, so the light is very different in the in the two images the sheep are white so it's it would actually be easier to warm up that background Eiffel Tower image than it would be to cool down the sheep so for that I'm going to go into the background layer uh, I'm going to bring up color balance and to warm it up I'm going to add some red, I'm going to add some magenta and yellow and I think I need to do this to the highlights more so than any other area. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like it belongs, maybe a little bit more red. Again, I'm going to zoom in on the sheep. So you'll notice that the green around the legs is sticking out less than it was before. And that's because we're getting closer to actually matching that color in the original. Now, the other thing we might need to do is, in addition to going in and adjusting the color here, we might also need to go in and adjust the levels, or the tone on the sheet. So for that, I'm going to bring up levels. I'm going to lock it to the sheet layer below this little button. And again here, I can adjust the mid-tones, and that should make it kind of blend in. It's a little bit more, I don't know, high key or contrasty, the lighting on the sheet. Let's just see. So yes, changing the lighting there I think makes a difference. Uh, it might not work with the lighting in the image. So in that case, I think I will just go and flip it. So edit, transform, flip horizontal. So now the light's in the other direction. You see the light's coming down from the left. Uh, you can tell by the deep shadows over here and the lit trees there. 
So I've got something that's a little bit more, I think, matched in terms of color. And again, just turn on that color balance on the background layer and you can kind of compare. So very blue to start with, very cool. I've warmed it up a little bit and now it matches the sheep much more. And the advantage of the layer mask is, again, it's completely editable. So if I decide, oh, I don't want that shadow after all, or I want, you know, I, or I deleted too much of the original, I just have to click on the layer mask. And if it's more of the original I want to bring back in, well, here we can see that maybe the, the sheep is still a little bit too light. I can bring back more of that original grass. And if it's less of that that I want, then I would go in, so maybe I'll just darken that actually while I'm here. Darken these would turn. So here you can see, actually, we can get it fairly close. Uh, and if it's that close, you don't need to necessarily have that great a selection outline. By going in and I, notice I'm not touching the uh, highlights, the white point or the dark point. I'm just adjusting the midtones to make this match. So that is much closer in terms of lighting to what, um, what is there. And uh, I don't really have to go in and undo what I did in terms of adding more of the grass back in, but if I did want to get rid of it, switch back to the eraser tool. Make sure you are on the right layer, so I need to be on the layer mask on the sheep layer. And I can just uh, erase some of that grass. Now with the layer mask, um, again, the shift key will disable it temporarily so you can see what's underneath. And uh, if you want it to be permanent, when you like what you have, don't want it to be any different, you can just drag it to the trash can and click apply and that will make it permanent. And so permanently deleting the rest of the background information. Here, I think what I would actually like to do is play around with that shadow from the original. Uh, and in this case, I want to use the eraser, but I want to use it at 50%. So if I just uh, drag that over the shadow, I'm making it a little bit more transparent so it's blending in more with that background. And I think that last one was a little bit too much, but that does it. If I wanted to go in and add an entirely new shadow, um, I would kind of draw it around the feet, but that will do later on.